Hello Tubesters, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Yes! Fourth time. I forgot who I was, I forgot what my channel was, I forgot what the video I was trying to announce. Fourth time lucky. Right guys, uh, welcome uh, to the second update. Uh, one moment. Oh dear, it's going to be one of those videos. And you've only got to watch it, you don't have to make it. Right, uh, all three of you watching. Uh, it's the update, the second update on the Heavy Armour, Heavy Guns group build entry. My entry is the... What is it? Monogram. And they call it Limburg. Monogram. Well, let's let's say it's... I'm putting dash 1 in 32, 1 in 35, but it's 1 in 32. I agree with my tubesters. Uh... A lot of progress has been made. I am so made up. Uh, dead chuffed, as we'd say in the UK. Dead chuffed being very happy. Uh, I've put some tracks on it. Yay! Gav has actually put some tracks on some armour. Gav loves doing armour and just can't do tracks, as most of the long-term tubesters know on this channel. Uh, they're rubber band tracks, and just because of that, I thought, I've got no chance uh, of ever getting these to go together. I'm going to have to do in the hot the hot uh, screwdriver <laughs> spanner I'm spannered but yeah uh, the hot screwdriver you know melt the tracks and all the rest of it but I've got to say they went together okay yeah a bit of fertling fettling fertling and fettling uh, but they went together uh, I did have to super glue the uh, drive sprocket um, I'd, I'd left them all loose and I thought well, I'm going to do what the guys often suggest put the um, leave the drive sprocket free now my good mara Steve at Steve Jones scale models modeling something like that he's so good I can't remember his channel uh, but we all know Steve um, I think on his panther one is 72 pound young panther <laughs> I'm thinking of my own panther uh, when he did his trumpeter tracks I believe he said one of his tips it could have been Steve probably gonna be somebody else now that they he left the drive sprocket in the two halves because they normally come in two halves don't they and I think if I'd have done that and stuck the drive sprocket on you know hot glue type of thing it would have worked and then put the track on and put the second part on uh, but I'd already glued them together when Steve came up with that little chestnut and uh, it was too late but it still went on so but all it did was the problem with this is it is an ancient kit and holes are bigger than they should be smaller than they should be uh, the caps that go on the end here there's some of them stick out I've not tried snipping back now because I thought originally and I, I'm still gonna put mud on it because there's big gaps and there's, there's stuff that needs covering and I want to put a small base on just going to be no the big tank for crew figures but there's going to be no other figures or anything like that it's just to put a bit of context to the tank really and uh, I I'm so happy that I've done tracks <laughs> I almost don't want to do them do them, uh, you know cover them up <laughs> originally you see my idea I don't think I really said what the idea was the idea I said mud but the idea was I'd seen a couple of pictures of them fording swampy ground or or river or small tribute trees or whatever and literally the tank was up to the top of the tr its top tracks and literally plowing through water spraying everywhere and I still might do that but it just seems such a shame to cover all those lovely tracks up so I don't know yet um, just wait and see and we'll wait and see what Gav comes up with in the next few days because it is now not that far away uh, I've got a painted uh, not weathered now what I do with my weathering uh, not that I do a load but of builds because they never get finished but I actually prefer using, the, I know people don't, but I like, I work with acrylic paint all the time. And what I like to do is where I've got bits that are needing to have, you know, dirt in the corners and stuff like that, and especially Vietnam, it was all over the shop. Uh, I use acrylic because I can use neat acrylic paint and stipple it, I can water it down. And, uh, and then once I've done all my acrylic work and all the chips and anything else you want to put on it, I'll then go over with the, and obviously I've put some, I just brushed on some gloss varnish to put the 
the uh, the few decals that are on on, and then I'll go all over it. It probably could do with a semi gloss um, coat on it. But if I do that, it's not semi gloss. Satin is a word, isn't it? Um, but then all my sandbags will be too shiny. I'm not sure yet how that's going to be achieved, but we'll 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 cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, uh, talking about that, I've left off the the one decal I left off was the uh, the weight uh, for bridges that it comes in at was it 58 tons or 52 tons? I can't remember. Um, could be even 56. So it definitely goes into the heavy armour, especially with all these sandbags on. Uh, but because I've done modifications and stuff, you wouldn't see that. So that's the only decal I left off. Um, Anyone anyway, talking, and we still haven't seen the tank every apart from the thumbnail. But yeah, really, really chuffed that it's 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 reached this stage because you could almost call it fin it's not finished, but you could almost call it finished in its state as it is. Um, I've converted some figures as well, which we'll have a look at as well. Um, stowage, uh, not done a lot. I've actually taken some photographs, and you'll see, and we'll go and see the tank in a minute. I've just rubbed them all off the Sherman, which actually Victor sent me as well. Uh, I've robbed that because I only put stowage on loose if I can help it because I like to, like in this case, reuse it. Because it's 1 in 32, some aspects like the jerry cans are a bit small on it. Um, and again, they've just been popped on there for now. I might tow it, tie them on the stowage uh, bustle at the back. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure yet. Uh, I found a 30 cal. I didn't want another 50. Uh, I've seen them, as I say, with single 50s, leaving the 50 in the cupola. Uh, I've seen them with the stripped out the 50 out of the cupola to mount it on the top for the commander to get better articulation of fire, I take it. Uh, but I've seen lots with uh, other 50s. I've even seen them with, they've got a buck sheaf, a twin 50 and, um, you know, twin 50s. But I wanted, I, I thought I'd have a 30 cal and I found um, several pictures of 30 cals being mounted on a pintle as well. So uh, 30 cal on that. Uh, which again you'll see in a second. Uh, I've done the crew figures mainly because I didn't want to close her up because I've got this plan to be in the mud and I just think I don't really see how it's going to be in the mud and moving in through the mud if it's yeah I mean yeah it could be under fire I suppose and closed up but uh, but then again you've got as you always do with these cavernous when there's nothing inside no interiors you have to have figures almost just to try and fill the hole up a bit <laughs> which is what's going to happen. Anyway uh, a big thank you to Joachim and Marcus for, for putting this group build on. As I say, I wasn't going to do it. I've been feeling really low with my modelling because I wasn't completing anything. My head's a complete mess. I couldn't process anything that I was doing and it, I was starting to really let myself down on the modelling side of it because I really enjoy doing it. I just I just struggle processing instructions because I've got obviously mental health problems. Uh, I can brush... I can paint figures all day long. I just I can seem to do that, but I think it's literally processing the written. It's not like dyslexia. I mean, I can see what I'm reading, although I do have problems with numbers. But I I can't process or seem to have trouble processing even the most simplest instructions, especially being told to by my wife. Uh, you will clean that. You will do this. Why have you left that open? Uh, that type of stuff. Uh, must do better. Um, but again. Anybody that misses this, there's going to be another build coming up after this one, uh, not including the, the Panther, because that really is just built and everything's done there. I'm just saying, once I've, I want to get this one done, and then I'm going to get onto the Panther and do the groundwork for that. So both, you know, that will come hard on the heels of this one. Um, but then I've got another build, and I'm, I, I'm either going to call it like the PTSD build, just because it's, <laughs> it sounds horrible, but it, it's easier to put in a title than mental health build. Um, it's not for, it's not small violins out for poor old Gav or it, it, what I'm trying to do is just not raise awareness particularly, but just say, look, there's a lot of us guys that it helps our mental health doing this stuff, right? And girls, but at the same time, there's a lot of us that really struggle because of our head problems. And that doesn't you have to be military, it can be anything, you know. Uh, I haven't got PTSD through my military service, I keep saying. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to hide behind my military service for PTSD. I've got, I had a, well, really rotten things happened and, and stuff. But anyway, but it's not from my military um, time. Uh, 
but any of us that have problems processing stuff you know you you might love you might love um modeling but you might have ptsd you might have any other type of mental health problem you might have something like dyslexia dyslexia anything i just wanted to say that here i am doing this you can sledge me all you like i don't give a monkeys yeah let's leave it at that i don't give a monkeys i don't give a brass razu uh i do what i want to do um uh, whenever I do a mental health stuff, I get loads of bloody hate. If, if I don't get hate, I get loads of hate you, dislikes. I don't give a f You know, I really don't. It's the one thing that actually doesn't get into my head. Uh, I, I just want to raise raise awareness that there are... When you hear people like me saying, oh, I can't do the tracks, I can't do this. It's not moaning. It's simply frustration that you can't do something that other guys are doing and you're not asking to be a, a champion model builder you're doing it because you love doing it you're doing it because it helps your mental health and it's just frustrating that, that you keep running up against these roadblocks so what i'm going to do is do a build under the camera the entire build painting probably not because i have got my you know i have to use my spray booth and i'm not and I can't do much editing and stuff, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to build it under the camera, and we'll see. I might be able to do it all right. I might. It, it might be <laughs> saying all this, boom, boom, and then the one, the build I'm doing has actually got rubber tracks, because the vehicle in real life has got rubber tracks. It's a BV two hundred six S, which is a, a, a you call it semi armored personnel carrier that's originally made in Sweden to go over boggy ground and snowy ground, but brilliant over boggy ground. Um, and and my Maris uh, Frederick sent me that a long time ago, and the only reason it got no built because again head problems. I was too scared to touch it. It's a beautiful, it's a tack on kit, beautiful. He said to me, and I was too scared to build it in case I, was, I did everything wrong. <laughs> but I'm doing it. That's going to be the PTSD build or mental health build, something along them lines. It's not going to come for until for a couple of weeks yet. Uh, but we'll. Uh, and I did used to. I didn't drive him in the army, uh, but I was in the. I used to get. I, I, I just four and a half months in the Falklands and several well more than several times we was trundled around in the back of them uh, so uh, I have got experience of them beautiful little uh, little track vehicles <laughs> there we go I just want you to know I'll just keep dropping it out there I should really do one of these coming soon type videos but yeah, I'm not good at that let's go down to the bench and take a look right guys thanks for joining me at the bench uh, the uh, I'm sorry I should have put the big tripod up I really should I, um, let me just do you a a, uh, a drone footage quickly just so we can get it all in so we've got uh, we've got flower power there that's the only groovy sign I've put on because obviously mine's mostly uh, you get like half a dozen different you know her uh, herbie something herbie as in you know not herbie goes to Monte Carlo but love bug Hey, that was the one I was after. <laughs> yeah, I get there and it says short time and short timer and a couple of other ones. Um, I just went with that one and fitted it on there because I say my, mine, as you can see, is fairly uh, it's fairly sandbagged up and covered up with everything else. Right, can we get back? Thank you. Right, uh, as I say, stowage. Don't mind it for the moment. It's there just to. I, I said I, was, I wanted to have a look to see what where I could put stowage and stuff. It's only rubbed off off the Sherman so probably some of it might not be age related specific or specific or whatever uh, still a fair bit to go on it yet um, but I just wanted to show her off uh, so all the all the sandbags are done as you can see they're all green uh, I've chosen green sandbags rather than the, the hessian ones of, of the brown color uh, I have dry brushed it with different colors um, to, to get some like orangey tones in there with the dust and everything uh, also, I've still got to finish it off yet, but you'll see bits of. Can we see bits, Gav? That's to represent like corrugated metal sheeting, so that they've uh, tack welded to some some L beams, like so at the front, and that's just to so they could every couple of rows of sandbags they've stuck some corrugated or metal sheeting of some description there, and you can see some under there. That's going to have to be uh, highlighted with some more greys and then metalised. I'll put some very carefully put some metal as well I won't, I'll rub it with a pencil so I don't get it on the sandbags but uh, so that's that there will be and there is some metal under there but you although I'm going to do it you won't see it 
the these are only a work in progress i say they're way oversized but then again they're one in 32 so they're probably size appropriate i'm just used to working in 135 so they look mahusive to me excuse me paint stirrer so yeah i've obviously that's just a base coat on everything so that, that's still going to be done uh jerry cans they look tiny they are one in 35s and they've just been put there for now i'm thinking of maybe hanging them off either side yet yeah. they would normally fit there's a carrying case at the back but obviously the crew have sandbagged over that so uh, that's that uh, thank you very much to Dutch Dave from the uh, Flying Dutchman channel this pipe here uh, go and visit Dutch Dave please he doesn't have as much subs as he should have for the for the great work he does so that's the Flying Dutchman I'll, I'll put a link in the description uh, to Dave's channel um, this is uh, an exhaust port or exhaust pipe whatever you want to call it uh, for a heater that would heat the the, the tank up inside uh, obviously it was used for the states for maybe Korea and Japan and and uh, the uh, European theater of operations I've uh, no wonder I haven't been seeing it on any Vietnam tanks <laughs> hardly needed but it, it was it was on there so I put it on I didn't know at the time what it was uh, Again, we've got some big blocky uh, spare track uh, pads there. Obviously, the rubber. Uh, we'll just gently lift her up. Uh, I have. It's all starting to come off a bit there. Not off. Uh, I mean, I'm about the paint. I did prime them grey and then spray some lacquer black over it. But it's obviously as I've been fertling around, it's it's rubbed off in a lot of places. But we'll get that with some whatever we're going to do with it. Um, there's no real. I, I, there's black, which is obviously as I've been putting the tyres on, has also chipped off in places. Um, so I haven't gone to town on any of that because originally it was going to literally be up to these return rollers in muddy water. Uh, and I'm not sure if I still might not go that way yet, but as you can see, it's pretty cruddy underneath. So, um, and this, none of these look great because they're all, it, the, the, as I say, it was, the, te the kit was done in, uh, one of the tubes has said even earlier, but this was stamped 66 uh, and obviously it's been reproduced by uh, um, monogram it's not obviously a 66 boxing um, let's just see we got our 30 cal up there that's not stuck on yet and it's not been painted properly it's just uh, it just came out of my spares box I've just put all the ammo I've seen lots of these but obviously loads of spare ammo because a lot of these are on fire bases and they used to have those mad minutes as they call them where they literally, when they got into a harbour area for, for to line up at night, they would, um, all the tracks and all the blokes there, they'd literally all just fire into the bush. I don't really think, um, it might have been better for their own morale, but I think it's more like a waste of ammunition, but hey, uh, it's not, that's for, not for me to say. Oh, I just have, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, so these are all just loose at the moment, but that's where I'd seen them quite often all piled up against the sandbags ready for the crew to get. Uh, this is just base coated. Now, a good colour for... The, this is a good colour. It's the anti-glare from AK. It's like a bluey black. Um, and uh, it's a good base to work from that. You put some pencil on there and then just... You can obviously put graph. The problem with powders is, unless you're careful, you get it all over everything else, whereas a pencil, I like to just get a... A, you know a soft pencil and just gently rub it and then just if you want something shiny you just rub it with a uh, uh, the end of a, a rubber or an eraser if you're calling that at the end of a pencil or something um, what else have we got yeah we've got a bit of L beam at the front yeah. so that's just been painted by the crew with the same color but I will put some chips in that because obviously it's just a piece of scrap L beam they've used I've got the other lights yet uh, just paint them in uh, the uh, canvas I've put over the front there, I made it up myself. The rear canvas, for the, that's to stop all the dust getting into the gun mechanism. Uh, that's plastic card, as in styrene sheet, very thin. And then the rest of it's obviously putty. Um, uh, and that's got a bit more work done to it yet. Yeah, I was wondering whether I put a, I don't think I will, I was going to put some shark mouth on or something, but I, with everything else around, I think it'd be getting a bit mess messy. Uh, I think that's about it, really. Uh, yeah, the, the engine grills, let's get around actually if we can. So the, oh, the back bustle, I'm probably going to be making up some 
tarts and putting them over. Um, I couldn't really find what stowage I wanted to put in there, so I will do that. Uh, I've got me, let's quick never. Yes, Gav's deck chair just looks like some potty that's had a couple of been folded over and got some wire, uh, florist wire put in it. But it'll go that way just to show that it's a deck chair, <laughs> hopefully. There'll be some stripes down it and that'll go. And it, I think I've made it too big, really, but never mind. <laughs> and that'll hang off the bustle as well. Um, let's see. The towing cables, obviously, everything's multi. Oh, you can't see, can you? Let's go down, hang on. The towing cable, uh, like everything, has just been already moulded on. Uh, to the to the kit you could say it's of its age. They're blooming short tow cables aren't they? I take it that's the the real length of them. Uh, with that it was just a bar uh, you know solid plastic bar so I melted put some glue on to soften up the plastic and then just put my, my knife in there and just um, made it look a bit wiry. It's got to have again some more stuff put on yet. I'm not sure if that's the jack there. Um, but, uh, and metalise that as well. That's all going to be done a bit more. Uh, our, oh, I knew that would happen. It's just we've got to do a load of exhaust work on the back there, um, still, and we've got to do some. Obviously, that's the barrel for when she's uh, on the road in peacetime. Uh, barrel clamp. Do something with that again. It's all been moulded on. So yeah, that's our. Uh, that's our M48A2. As I say, you can tell her that she's an A2. Uh, the only well, the only way Gav can tell her she's an A2 is these early ones had three um, three idler. Oh, I knew something was going to fall off. Three idler wheels uh, on the return rollers, I should say, on the on the top, uh, and they have five in the uh, A. Um, the, the other versions anyway. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, let's just move it quickly because we won't be able to see the figures. Yes, they want to. So that's that. Come on over there because she weighs a ton with that, uh, that stuff on. Right, now here's our driver. I've had to cut him right the way down. Um, I just. He got the original 1944 tank helmet on, so I've potted over that. It's a bit dinged everywhere, as you can see. Um, I'm not, I've never done any of this type of work before, so uh, it, it's that's a bit new to me. Got to, but all of them have got to have a. Hang on, let's get in closer. All of them have got to have a mic piece coming from there, so this will be built up a bit more yet, and I'm, I'll make a mic, mic piece to go over there, and they have another one where the the wire comes down there into this piece, so they've got to be built up slightly. And that's the ear defenders under, not ear defenders, but that's the actual listening pieces, if you want to put it that, under the, the main helmet. Which I actually used, I believe I used on him, I used his original flaps there, and just went over the top. Uh, made a bit of a, uh, a flak jacket. So I, I was going to put, try and do goggles and sunglasses, and I thought, what am I doing? I've never done anything like this before, let's just keep it fairly simple. And then our two crewmen at the top have had the same treatment, but they've got uh, World War II American steel helmets. The one I cut the peak off, and then I thought, well, you know what, actually, the, these type of helmets stick out very slightly at the front, and I thought, well, I shouldn't have done that. So on the second one, I don't know if that's the first or second one. Again, they're a bit dinged up, you know, I'm trying to smooth them with sandpaper, and I put these on with very, I roll it out of the putty. Uh, this is Magic Sculpt on this, just Magic Sculpt. Use some talcum powder to stop it sticking. Though the the problem with that is it can also then, uh, when you go to lay your stuff on, you you can it it doesn't always adhere very well because you've you've put talc on it. Um, so I'd have to put a bit of water on the on the clothing. Now he's in cold weather gear. Uh, he's even they've even got scarves. But in Vietnam, a lot of the guys used to put scarves around the neck, uh, towels around the neck. So that's what that's going to be. I've obviously made his his flat jacket. It's not great. These uh, um, kidney uh, protectors and stuff, they could have done with being a bit higher, really, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I could have done it. I was thinking of doing a, a belt and a sidearm, and again, I was just thinking, no, let's just keep it for this one. It's a simple tank. Let's just keep it simple. All we're trying to show the tubesters is 
that they're in a Vietnam environment. He's wearing gloves as well. They're just going to have to be painted out as 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 flesh coloured. <laughs> that's, that's just what it is. It is what it is. I don't know how they're actually going to fit on. I'll say I'm going to put a a piece of spruce, stick it down, um, try and measure it to some length, and and stick it to the base of the tank with super glue or something. I don't know. Um, so I, I'm stuck to what I can do with the hands. I did use this. They all came out my spares box from that Sherman. Because I hadn't done the infantry, so this guy, I actually used his another bloke's hands. But again, they've all got gloves on and stuff. It, you know, that's just how it's going to have to be. Um, but uh, I don't know what that is here. But it's just some marks on there. But again, that they're too small, really. They needed to be higher. But I'm, I'm not. It's enough to tell the story. If I had to do these again, I, I think I'd go to town on them. And now I've not, now I know the the rough principle of what I, I want to be doing. If I if I had to do these again, uh, I, I would be making them look a, a lot better, I think. But again, these have all got to have uh, mic pieces and stuff. But I want to get to the faces before I do that. Um, but uh, I don't know which one will be the commander and the loader yet. Um, we'll see. So yeah, thank you very much. Let's just plonk our, our Flower Power M48 back. So thank you very much for stopping by and taking a look. As I say, I, I'm really I'm really happy. Uh, first build of the year, could still be the only build of the year, um, but I've actually done it. I, I, you know, even at this stage, it's a tank. You can see it's a tank. You know, you could even put it on the shelf like that if you really wanted to. But I am gonna once the once I've done my bits of what you can call weathering with the, with my normal acrylic paints, I will spray it all over with a a varnish, and then I will use a few bits of oils as well. Uh, I think the armor texture came out well. You can't particularly see it. I don't think. Um, but I think that came out fairly well. You see armour texture there, armour texture on the front that wasn't there before, armour texture on the on the roof. And these M48s were quite scabby actually. The, when you look at them, the, they are really quite heavily pitted and you know real, real cast detail. If you're doing an M48, just don't obviously cast, don't put any textures on the on these bits because these were just more mild steel if I believe right um, they weren't armoured or cast in any way it's just the main the main frame of the tank if that makes sense and the and the and the uh, uh, turret <laughs> where does after and even this is uh, the C commander's cupola is obviously also armour textured as well so thank you very much for stopping by and taking a look. Next time you see her, I don't know if I'll be calling it done or not. Um, we'll just wait and see for that one. Um, but uh, there'll either be one more or two more updates or one more update. Depends how, how quickly I jump ahead. But as I say, I've been putting other stuff on the back burner for the moment. Even the Lexington's had to, to stop while I've been doing this because I want. I'm, 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 it's too easy for me to get halfway on a project and then run out of steam. So... I wanted to get this one done. Uh, I'm really, really happy that I've got some tracks built, even if they are rubber tracks. Uh, you know, they're never going to look brilliant, but um, it, it was that was a real. Good, that was just last night. I thought, oh god, here we go. Let's try and stick. Then it was about ten o'clock at night. I thought, let me let's go and try and stick these these tracks together. It's not going to work, is it? And they just I didn't want to say they fell together, but they, there was no real real dramas with them. So uh, really, really happy with that. It's just nice to see one of my builds with tracks on that haven't fallen apart. But more importantly, when they fall apart, like that little panther, if you remember, all that I'm having to dig that into the ground because the, the way that I stuffed everything up. Um, now, this was only going to be heavily glooped up just because the, you'd have to put a hell of a lot of work into this and I didn't want to, yes, I know I've made a load of sandbags, but I didn't want to do that much, have corrections on this for a tank that's, it's it's of its era, if that makes sense. You know, um, if this was like the TACOM M48 tank, you, you know, you'd be doing a lot more to it, or I would be anyway, but uh, this one is, is of its era, and I wasn't going to start taking off mud guards. I wasn't going to start 
doing anything more than I've done. I wanted the sandbags, I wanted to give it a Vietnam feel. Um, and by all means, none of you don't have to think that because it's Vietnam, if you go looking yourself, there's loads of tanks that never had any armour on whatsoever. You know, pick your own, own tank really, can't you? So thank you very much. Uh, and I'm glad that the figures have, well, they look all right for me at the moment. Uh, I'm glad the figures have, have gone like they did. They took about uh, about four hours to, to do all three figures. Uh, but I didn't have to go buying any figures. I didn't have to um, use the the three precious figures I've got from Frederick who sent me um, who sent me them because uh, I want to use them on a different build and as I say they are really 1 in 35s and these are uh, compared to a 1 in 32 tank so uh, I'm glad that I had these knocking around out the spares box uh, and it's it's an easy if you're doing Vietnam it's an easy conversion to do just just make that potty really thin make little squares of it don't try and drape it all around the helmet in one go uh, just do little squares, apply them, use lots of water and, a, and the little, uh, I'm done, I've put them away now, but the little sculpting I've shown before, silicon sculpting tools, uh, and it smooths it out. Yeah, there are a few dings in there still, even after sanding, but as I say, I'm new to that, so I'm, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to do something like that, you know, it's, it's a, go for it, because, you know, there's a, it will give even if they're not perfect it will give you the feel of vietnam so anyway thank you very much uh coming up um i don't know what's coming up to be honest with you uh, i've done the trumpeter's horse apart from the uh woolen uh covering on the saddle and then i've got the two figures to paint so the i'll have napoleonic hussars up anywhere between friday and Tuesday of the following week, Friday this week, Tuesday the following week, depending, but they'll be at least done. They won't be based, but they'll have all been done. I've uh, got some six mils. Uh, thanks to some of the guys that give me good advice over the six mils uh, and with the backer sizes and stuff like that. I appreciate that. Um, so I've got some six mils to show you some stage in the next week or so. I haven't got any further forward on the die cast conversion. Uh, I stuffed up all the interior and I've just got to get enthusiasm to go again, which I will do because I, I really wanted to have a go at that and it's for Sean, so um, I will get back to that. I just wanted to throw all my energies into this one. Lexington, as I said, I had some real problems. Again, because of my head problems, I followed slavishly the the instructions rather than maybe... I couldn't process, I can't process thinking ahead. It, it just threw me into even more problems, but it, it caused me a heck of a load of problems with the flight deck which isn't glued down but it wouldn't fit uh, and I had to strip away bits of the Lexington and, and literally restart so uh, but once I've put some paint on or some primer on and so on, on I've got probably about another couple of nights of doing bits to her before I want to show you uh, otherwise you're not seeing that much more progress because I've as I say I had to step back and correct stuff um, so you'd only be getting seeing stuff that's uh, but there is, I do need to show you that because I don't want anybody else f doing what I did. And uh, for once, I, I was following the instructions. I've, I've reread them a hundred times, and well, maybe not a hundred times, but uh, and it's they could have done trumpeter could have done a hell of a lot better on that. And it'll catch a, if you if if you if you can process your instructions and you've obviously got a lot of experience you'd probably problem solve that one without ever getting to the state, uh, state not state, but the sticking into the gluing stage, you'd have picked up that you shouldn't really do that. But any new guys or anybody, i say anybody with their problems might, might miss that and it would be really a real bummer, you know, to find out that you, you're having to strip bits off like I did and cut bits up and, and start again. So anyway, that's coming. <laughs> Is there anything else? There was something else, but it's out my head. No, um, oh, we're still going to get back to the Roman, do them the damn shields and get them done. But I don't want to do them until the Hussars are done, because then they're out the way then. Once I've got them in the basing stage, I know that they're, they're done. Uh, and then we've got some French Hussars to unbox, and, and we've got French Hussars following that along after them. Right. Uh, that's it. Look after yourselves. Uh, thanks for all the videos. They've been great company as always and much appreciated.